Hey guys, Kaiser here. The team over at Forgotten Empires have just dropped a massive patch update preview for the latest Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition patch. They haven't released any patch notes yet, but it looks like it's going to be huge. The community has uncovered a bunch of changes to the game, and so I thought it'd be fun to record a quick overview showing what we've discovered so far in the game. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And the very first thing we've got to show off is actually in the menus. When the patch drops, they have enabled, within game, uh, idle pointers and small trees. These are normally mods that you have to download for AOE2DE, but now this is actually built into the game, so if you check both of these things on, you will never have to worry about re-enabling those mods again. And I'll show you really quickly what that looks like in game. Here we go. So we got our Idleville icons showing you you need to move them. And of course we do have small trees enabled right out of the gate. So that's really cool. Nice quality of life feature. But I'm betting that's not what you're here for. Let's get into the changes. And the first one, this is huge. They have released a new technology for most of the civs in the game in the barracks. Gambesons is a new Castle Age technology. It requires supplies. It costs 100 food and 100 gold, and it gives the militia line, the swordsman, an additional plus one pierce armor. Now, this could be massive, changing around the meta of the game. I don't know, but what a lot of people have talked about is that the infantry line have felt weak, particularly within the Castle Age. Uh, once you hit Long Swordsmen, a lot of people didn't like to use Long Swordsmen. It seemed like they were weak across the board. And so Gambesons gives them a bunch of additional durability against archers and against, you know, city defenses, castles and town centers and the like. So Gambesons will be uh, a really exciting technology. I'm really curious to see how that's going to change uh, gameplay for the different civs. A lot of civilizations have received access to this tech, not all of them, obviously. Um, if you don't get access to supplies, you don't get gambesons. Alright, so um, that is going to be really, really big for the meta of the game all around. Also, a whole bunch of changes to different civs. Starting at the top. I think the first one that's really big is Bengalis. They've got a new bonus. Their cavalry do plus two attack versus skirmishers. Uh, Bengalis don't really have the best uh, stable line in the game, but you do get light cav, you do get battle elephants, and this will just make the light cav even more effective at knocking out skirmishers and making your archer push easier. So that'll be an interesting bonus to see in game. Let me pull up my notes here. Yeah. All right. Next, this is really big. Uh, the Britons. I said I was thinking the Burgundians, but the Britons have actually been nerfed. Um, if you go down to their team bonus, archery ranges now work 10% faster. This used to be 20% faster. So I don't, I don't know how huge of a nerf this is, but it will make it just a little bit harder for the Britons to get that archer death ball rolling. Uh, which, of course, I mean, they're still working 10% faster than everybody else, so that, that's still a really nice bonus, but it's not quite as strong as it used to be. So I like that. I think the, the Britons have just always been a thorn in my side, so uh, I really like seeing them get nerfed a little bit. That's a good one for me. Now, here's what I meant to look at. The Burgundians, they have been rather significantly changed, specifically around the Flemish militia. Uh, the first thing that we've got to look at is the technology itself. Let me go over here. Flemish Revolution. Uh, upgrades all existing vills to Flemish Militia and allows Flemish Militia to be created at the barracks. Now, that is a change. They used to be created at the, the town center. Now it's at the barracks. Um, and we'll talk about the unit itself in a second. But the technology, it used to cost 1,200 food and 650 gold. Now, it costs 200 food, 150 gold, and an additional 10 food and 5 gold for each villager converted. 
Now, my experience, uh, I, I think that ends up be costing you more than it used to. Uh, assuming that you have 120 villagers when you pop the Flemish Revolution, that cost will be 1,400 food and 750 gold. So I think the Flemish Revolution is going to cost you more. And going back over to the unit itself, it has been rather significantly weakened. Uh, speaking of which, let me just say real quick, I don't have information on all of the unit stat changes in the game, but I did get a couple of them, and one of them is going to be the Flemish Militia. Flemish Militia right now, it uh, has 60 HP, 11 attack, and 0 pierce armor. It used to have 75 HP, 12 attack, and 1 pierce armor. So that means it's just all around less durable, it will go down faster, particularly against archers or base defenses. Um, I mean, this is still going to be a strong wave attack, but it will not be nearly as strong as it used to be. I think this is a very sizable nerf for the militia. Probably the one thing that's maybe a little asterisk, a, a little bit of an interesting aside, is that the militia now costs less as well. You can see here that the militia costs 50 food, and 15 gold to train within the barracks. Uh, it used to cost, I think it was 60 food and 25 gold. So now it costs less if you want to train the militia, but I don't think most people actually would train the Flemish militia out of the town center or the barracks. Uh, they used to just, you know, use the revolution and win or lose the game off of that push, right? So I don't know how important that change is, but that is one small buff in a sea of nerfs for the Flemish militia. <clears throat> Let me see. What else do we got here? Uh, da, 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 da. Next, I mentioned the, uh, the Britons. Ah, here's another one. Uh, a classic. The Byzantines. Their unique technology, uh, Greek fire, has actually received a new function. Fire ships still get plus one range, which is really nice. But also, bombard towers get a plus five blast damage. So that gives this technology some use on land maps. Uh, I can imagine. I don't use Bombard Towers a lot myself, but I have read that Bombard Towers can be very useful in kind of setting up within your base to help defend against raids. So this technology could become very useful in just helping to uh, push back raids, which is great because that is the Byzantine uh, identity. is a very defensive civilization. So uh, Greek Fire now has a purpose on land maps. Pretty cool. Next up, oh, this one is actually really cool. Uh, this is a, I think this is fairly unique to AoE2 now. The Celts have also received an update to Stronghold. Stronghold was one of the uh, least popular unique technologies in the game. It used to give castles and town centers 33% of a faster fire rate. It still does that, but now in addition, castles heal allied infantry within a seven tile radius. So now if you have infantry just around the castle, they don't need to be garrisoned within it. They could just be around it. They could be fighting outside of the castle. Stronghold means that the castles will be slowly healing infantry. I say slowly. I don't actually know the rate of healing, but castles will be healing infantry in a radius around the castle. That's pretty wild. And that's actually really cool because this is, I want to say... The first example in-game of an aura effect. Maybe it's not the first example. Maybe someone could find an example. But this is a an example of an aura effect in AoE 2, which I we haven't really seen much of. I mean, maybe the full work uh, bonus is something that we've seen. But a kind of healing aura is not something we've seen a lot of uh, thus far. So Stronghold for the Celts has picked that up. This is a bonus, I believe, that found its way into the Rome at War mod. I want to say one of the Roman civilizations had this feature. And so now we actually see it in the game itself with the Celt Stronghold. That's really, really cool. Next up, we have the Chinese. This one is very interesting. I, and I'm, I'm really curious to see how this will affect the play rate and the win rate of the Civ. The Chinese start has been changed. It used to be that the Chinese would start with three villagers but then lose 200 food. Now, the Chinese only start with two additional villagers, but 
they only are missing 150 food. So you still have 50 food in the bank. And what that'll mean is when you start the game, uh, you know, you do have that 50 food to begin town center production. I think that at the pro level, this will definitely be a nerf. This will be curbing the Chinese strengths at the highest level. But uh, I have been reading in the community that uh, this maybe will actually make the Chinese a little bit easier to play at lower levels. I don't know whether that's true or not. We'll have to see. But um, it does seem like technically a nerf for the Chinese, which at the highest level makes sense. Uh, let's see. Next tip that I've got on the docket. The Ethiopians have a brand new team bonus. Ethiopians, their new team bonus. It, I, I'm actually forgetting off the top of my head what it used to be. The new team bonus, though, outposts gain an additional plus three line of sight and no longer cost any stone. This is pretty cool. Definitely gives the Ethiopians... Um, I, I just think the outposts are underrated. Uh, they do provide a lot of intelligence. And if you, you use them effectively, you can keep eyes on way more of the map than your opponent. Now with the Ethiopians, you have even more of a reason to go into outposts. You don't have to worry about spending stone on them. So uh, you, know, you can throw down those outposts and not impact your 3TC boom at all. right? So this is a pretty nice bonus for the Ethiopians. Oh, this one's big. This one is big. If you're a fan of the Goths, you're going to like this. They've got a new bonus. Villagers get plus 5 attack versus wild boar. Hunters carry plus 15 meat. That's all old. But now, hunt, which is boar and deer, last 20% longer. So you are now getting not just faster food out of your, you know, your boar and your deer, but you're getting more food out of your boar and your deer. And I think that could have some really nice early game potential. I mean, this is just a solid buff for the Goths. If you're a Goth player, you're going to want to grab as, many, as much boar as you can. Uh, you're definitely going to want to lure deer and take advantage of the deer now because you're getting more food out of them. Uh, this is going to give them a really nice, smooth early game. This is a really great bonus for the Goths. Next up, we have the Inca. They have been changed pretty significantly. First, they're, they used to have a bonus, start the game with a free llama. That is now their team bonus. So their old team bonus, which was, I think it was Spearman and Skirm get additional line of sight, something like that. That's gone. You start the game with a free llama. That is a team bonus now. Every ally of the Inca gets a free llama. On top of that, they have a new bonus. Military units cost... 15%, 20%, 25%, and then 30% less food through the ages. So you're, you're whether you're going for, a kind of again, an infantry push, which we might see a lot more infantry play now that Gambesons is on the field, although I think you don't get Gambesons, so regardless. Uh, but, you know, so we might see more infantry play, or if you as the Inca are going to go into uh, your Eagle Warriors, right, you're now getting advantage this food bonus is going to be really nice in helping you out. Obviously, this does not help you if you're going into archer play. Archers do not cost food, and this bonus does not help you with villager production. So it'll be useless if you're going archers. But for militia play, eagle warrior play, this is a really, really nice bonus. Oh, speaking of which, I do think I read that the eagles now cost a little bit more than they used to. I've not confirmed that myself but I believe Eagles cost a little bit more food-wise, and so uh, for the Inca, this bonus kind of, it's it, it sort of, I guess that, that nerf to Eagles eats into the benefit that the Inca get, but that would be an overall nerf to the Maya and the Aztec who also would want to go into Eagle play. Now they cost a little bit more food. All right, let's see. Next up we have the Malians. And I will admit to you, I don't actually know how to understand this one. The Malians get a new bonus. Villagers drop off 15% more gold. I believe the bonus used to be that uh, gold miner gold mines lasted longer. Now it's vills drop off more gold. I believe that means that you're actually collecting gold faster as well as longer. Like the, the gold miner gathers, 
you know, uh, I don't know the numbers. The gold miner gathers 10 gold from the mine, but then when the gold miner drops it off at the camp, it becomes, you know, 12 gold in your bank or something like that. I, I, I don't know how the numbers pan out, but if I'm understanding this right, you are gathering gold faster and you're gathering more gold from your gold mines. So that's a pretty nice bonus for the Malians right there. The Sicilians have seen some really interesting changes. And I'm I'm really excited to talk about the Sicilians because uh, what they have needed is... How do I want to put it? They, they needed a buff to their unique features. I want to see more Donjon play. I want to see more Sargent play from the Sicilians. And I don't know whether these this is enough, but I really like the direction that Forgotten Empires is taking the Sicilians by buffing them in this way rather than, you know, just more knight play, archer play, what have you. So with the Sicilians, the Donjon, if we scroll over here, can now train the Spearman line in addition to the Sargent. And that's really, really big. I think that does encourage, again, either defensive play or offensive play. It means that, um, you know, you are more effective at pushing back and repelling scout attacks, night attacks. You know, if, if someone's coming at you with cavalry, you can actually use your donjons to produce spearmen and repel that. So that's really nice. It makes them even more like a barracks, which is really cool. Now, unfortunately, I, I did go in and test this. The donjon does not count as a feudal age building for taking up to the next age. Which I think is a shame. I, I would have liked to see that just to give them that extra um, benefit for building a donjon. But even so, um, that's a pretty cool utility benefit for the donjon. On top of that, the feudal age sergeant gains an additional 5 HP. So, uh, and I, I believe that's it as far as the stats go. So it's not a lot, but that 5 HP does mean that the unit is a little bit more durable. It will take, you know, one more hit from different sources, right? So I I like it. I I, I like the, the durability of the Sargent here. That's a really nice uh, benefit. Now, the Sicilians do get a nerf alongside all of this. If we see over in their benefits... Castles build 50% faster and town centers build 100% faster. That used to be castles and TCs build 100% faster. So um, castles now do not drop quite as quickly for the Sicilians as they used to. Now, Sicilian castle drops will still be the fastest castle drops in the game. Uh, they do, villagers, Sicilian villes do build castles faster than Spanish villes do. The Spanish fields just build 30% faster across the board. Uh, so this is still, I believe, the fastest dropping castle drops in the game. But it's not as strong as it used to be. So I think a really nice bonus for Donjon Sargent play. I like it. Uh, I want to see more, but I, I like what, what they've got there. The Saracens also have uh, received a small change, but a really cool one, I think. Uh, da, da, da. Transport ships get double HP and double carry capacity. This bonus used to be plus five carry capacity. So this means that your transport ships have a lot more room to transport a lot more units. Let's, let's actually take a look here. Where is the transport ship? Okay. Okay, it actually does not tell me right here in the game how many units the transport ship can carry. If I remember right, and I'm just doing this off the top of my head, the transport ship normally carries five units. So initially, it's the same, because double five is, is ten, it's plus five. But as you upgrade the transport ship, you can pick up things like careening, uh, you pick up dry dock, and the space will absolutely explode and a single Saracen transport ship. Well, let's, let's run the numbers. If, it, if it's five, careening makes it from five to 10, dry dock from 10 to 20. So it used to be, if you, if you got all these texts, five, 10, 20, then it was, it used to be plus five for the Saracen. So it'd be 25 pop space in a single transport ship. 
Now, five, 10, 20, 40 pop space in a single Saracen transport ship. Now, I've not confirmed those numbers, but that's what it seems to mean to me. It's a pretty nice bonus. Pretty nice. Oh, another one we've got to talk about. The Spanish have received a couple of very interesting changes. Number one, Inquisition, their unique technology. It now gives their missionary units plus one range, which is pretty cool. Missionaries are a unit that we don't see a lot of, and I think that's kind of a shame. I, I, I want to see more missionary play. Uh, I believe that this will be really big for them because one of the weaknesses that missionaries had, they're fast, you know, faster than monks. I mean, they're, they're, they're on a, a mule, but they do not have as much range as monks do. And so with this, this is addressing the main weakness of the missionary. And so I think that'll make them a lot more viable. I don't know. I don't know if this has become meta. I don't know that. Uh, I, I actually don't remember off the top of my head what the range difference is between monks and missionaries. But this will bridge that gap at least somewhat. So hopefully we see more missionary play out of the Spanish. That's really cool. Also, they get a new bonus. The Spanish get a new bonus. They receive 20 gold for each technology they research. I ran this in the system here. So uh, Loom counts as an example. So you spend 50 gold to research Loom. And then as soon as it researches, you get 20 gold right back. And this should combine with the blacksmith upgrades not costing any gold. So now not only do they not cost gold, but you're actually getting gold back for researching them. Right, so this is a, a really nice, i say like early, mid-game way of just picking up a little bit of extra gold and just, uh, I think, making your early army transition a little bit smoother. Because if you want to go into conquistadors, you want to go into knights, that costs a lot of gold. This is just going to help those early numbers pick up steam. So that, that's pretty cool. Now, I can't leave the Spanish without mentioning they did get one nerf, and it is a pretty big one because, obviously, if you're playing the Spanish, you want to play Conquistadors. Uh, I did notice that the Conquistadors now have minus one Pierce armor. So it, they used to have two, two, two melee, two Pierce. It is now two melee, one Pierce. I forget if they lost a little bit of HP, too. I, I, I know the main one is the Pierce armor. So that will mean that they are not quite as effective raiding into enemy bases, that they will take more damage from town centers and towers. Uh, they will take more damage from uh, skirmishers, right? So that is a, is a pretty big hit to the standard Spanish fast castle conquistador rush play. But they've also got some pretty cool bonuses to their missionaries, goal bonuses. I could see maybe some night openings, some different openings that are kind of open up to the Spanish so that's really, really neat. <clears throat> Finally, the last civilization that I have notes on right here are the Vikings. And both of the Viking unique texts have been tweaked pretty significantly. Chieftains still does bonus damage to calf from infantry. But then on top of that, leaning into their Viking barbarian raider heritage... Now, infantry generate gold when killing villagers, trade units, and monks. I don't know how meta-defining that bonus is, but just from a thematic point of view, I absolutely love this. That's, that is an amazing bonus, and uh, I remember thinking a bonus like this would be cool for something like the Vikings or the Goths, just as part of their civ identity. Yeah, because, because of the idea of, you know, you just imagine the raiders hitting the English Isles and sacking the monasteries. And you, that's, that is that is the Viking theme historically. And so seeing it play into their, their gameplay mechanically like this is really, really cool. So uh, my hat is off to the, the dev team just from a, uh, again, just from a thematic point of view. I really like this, this change to Chieftains. Then their old unique tech which was uh, Berserker Gang, is just gone. 
I do not know whether that has been rolled into the Berserker unit, whether that's been rolled into the Elite Berserker upgrade, or whether that regeneration bonus is just lost. I, I, I don't know that as of this recording. But that old unique tech is gone, and we've got a new one instead called Bogsvegar. It brings, it gives you your archer line and your long boats plus one attack. And I find this really fascinating because if you've paid attention to the AoE2 meta going back years ago, uh, the Vikings were a very popular civ and they were played as an archer civilization. Even though, you know, you see up here, they're an infantry and naval civ, most of the pros played the Vikings as archers. And uh, the reason why was just because their wheelbarrow and handcart bonus was so good, and they had all the, the requisite techs, that, um, you know, there was just, it was, people just liked playing archers as the Vikings. Just the economy was so strong. Well, once they lost, and I forget how far back this was, but they lost Thumb Ring. And when they lost Thumb Ring, people started to say, well, you know, the, they're really not that good for playing archers anymore. And, and when they stopped playing archers, infantry became, you know, that, that infantry was their thing, but infantry weren't popular. So the Vikings somewhat fell out of favor. Well, now we've got Gambesons in the game, so we might see more infantry play. So the Vikings might be buffed and, and stronger from that perspective, just because infantry as a whole are better. But now we have a new Imperial Age unique tech giving their archer line plus one attack, meaning... Now let me check this here real quick. I know they do get ballistics. And they do get... You know, obviously you get uh, Arbalest. You do get a full blacksmith for your archers. So this may give them some, I'll just say very strong archer play, archer options. Your archers will be doing one more attack than other archers. I don't know how that, how thumb ring maybe messes with that DPS, because obviously you're not firing faster with thumb ring. But getting plus one attack means that this is a really significant buff to Viking archer play. So... Uh, that should be really interesting to see if the Vikings become really popular again for their archers or for their infantry. Boy, there's a lot here. And I can almost guarantee you that I have not mentioned in this video everything that has been announced, everything that's come out for the game uh, with this, you know, private update, what is it, patch update preview. I can almost guarantee you there's more than we've talked about in this video. Uh, but what I've already mentioned is huge. Gambeson's promises to be a game changer. We've got, you know, the idol icons and the uh, small trees built into the game now. A bunch of civilization changes. I'm sure that there are more unit changes. This is going to be a wild, wild patch. Guys, I hope you appreciated the, the news video. Uh, if you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Take a look in the comments below because if there's anything that I didn't mention... Either I or I'm sure somebody else will add a comment below sharing more information about what this latest patch is bringing to AOE2DE. Guys, this is going to be a fun one. Thanks so much for watching. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser, signing out.